Hey, welcome to another radio related video and uh, today we're going to talk about geomagnetic activity, geomagnetic storms, uh, aurora borealis and sort of flux and the effect that all that and the sun has on shortwave radio. It's um, kind of a little heavy subject but uh, if you want to understand why some days you can hear a signal and the next you cannot. Uh, having a minimum of understanding of what it all means is pretty much a uh, essential part of shortwave and amateur radio. So first of all we're going to show you the three websites that I would use to check for um, what's happening in the solar activity and also the geomagnetic activity here on Earth because they're related together. The Sun and the Earth are really in, in interaction. So um, the idea of this video came from a uh, user that asked me, well okay in a video you mentioned uh, solar, there was a geomagnetic storm and um, the uh, user wanted to know if it was still going on and uh, you know basically a little detail about what um, it also does to shortwave radio. First of all you have um, to understand the numbers behind the uh, solar activity. When you go to this website that I'm showing you right now this is the first one it's uh, www.solarham Dot net and uh, this is uh, actually a, a website by an amateur radio operator the uh, VE3EN operator it has the essential information right here in the middle if we uh, close in on that here so you see my face at the same time <laughs> sorry for that um, two I would say there are three numbers that are interesting here but two are important for the uh, immediate time so solar terrestrial data first of all you gotta check the date and the time so today we're October 17 and it says it's 1919 GMT is the time that it was uh, updated uh, so we're 1924 here so it's pretty new data and uh, you see one number that's SFI SFI means solar flux. That's the amount, let's just put it down to the amount of energy that the Sun sends our way. For shortwave radio listening, we want to have a solar flux that is high, the highest possible because it will help especially the higher frequency ranges uh, propagation. Uh, maybe you've noticed that 21 megahertz where there are some uh, seldom some stations there on the international broadcast band you might notice that someday it's totally dead and on other days you'll listen and you'll hear stations and maybe you're wondering why one of the culprit could be the solar flux the solar flux index has a direct effect on the frequencies that can be used for shortwave broadcasting the problem with solar flux is that we are act this time on a we are at the maximum of solar activity the solar cycle 24 but it's the smallest cycle in more than a hundred years which means solar flux is low I remember the 80s uh, even in the 90s when solar flux was 300 350 um, solar flux can range from 60 up to 400 um, basically you want to have at least a hundred or more to help propagation below 100 uh, high frequencies will not propagate well and uh, we, you'll even see that winter nights when solar flux is low winter nights are not great for uh, shortwave radio listening uh, late at night so uh, you want to have a solar flux that's um, high above 100 if possible we're at 128 today um, there's another thing that you want to check for and there's the A and the K indices. A 
is let's put it at average for the past 24 hours um, it's a look at the last 24 hours the activity that we had in the geomagnetic activity that's the earth itself its geomagnetic field and how it uh, reacts and there's the K in the C that is the geomagnetic activity right now you want to have both of these numbers the lowest possible zero is fantastic uh, for the K index it goes from zero to nine two, two or less is, is good um, but even two for some types of propagation can sometimes be a little problematic the higher the number uh, the higher the geomagnetic field on Earth is unsettled and changes the properties of the radio frequencies that you're listening to. So I know it's a big subject, it's a little hard to understand, but if you basically understand one thing, you want solar flux higher than 100 and K and the C of 2 or less, you will just be able to make a difference between good propagation conditions and propagation conditions that might be um, not as interesting actually let's let's put it and in not in, in, not interesting so uh, solar hand this is a great website because it has a lot of detail on uh, all sorts of things including uh, charts of you know the last 24 hours you can check the different charts here they show you for example um, every three hours and they give you a color code so it's interesting because when the K and the C is three or more it becomes yellow uh, or four or more it's yellow and if it's more than four it's red so uh, you've got like a warning when it's green it's not bad when it's uh, yellow it's kind of unsettled when it's red it's rather bad and so on and so on so th this website is really really if you're interested in uh, astronomy the sun and how the uh, the interaction with with you know our uh, hobby of radio listening this is a great website to go to solarham.net another place you can go and you've got these really nice pictures of uh, solar flares and uh, the sun and you have always got that little solar update that talks to you about solar activity so this is one of the websites. Uh, another website that's interesting is solar, uh, the spaceweather.com. This one is kind of a mixed bag. It also has all sorts of information about uh, aurora borealis, and uh, it has lots of information on um, meteorites and stuff. But you have the basic uh, information on the left side, which is interesting. Uh, you'll know what's happening. You see the sun with its sunspots. The more sunspots, usually the better, but it depends because sunspots can create um, can create uh, solar flares that will disrupt our geomagnetic field and so on. It's very very complex interaction here, uh, but you have the same indices. So if you're looking for the data, solar flux 128 here. You've got the K indice here, quiet. Uh, so it's a uh, maximum for the past 24 hours three quiet so you know that things are settling down you have this picture of the aurora borealis where it is around um, earth and you can switch to different maps so if you're in Europe for example you'll click the Europe map and see where it is so you can locate your country the closer this uh, auroral zone is to where you live the more disturbed propagation is going to be actually uh, so this spaceweather.com website great great website for information and if you want to have a real quick look at what's it like actually at this time just go to this one dx.qsl.net slash propagation that's dx.qsl.net slash propagation they have the basic info directly here so you have a look, a quick look at the solar flux, the A indice, and the K indice. So remember, you um, the best propagation you'll have is probably with a higher solar flux, but a low K indice, two or less. But even if the K indice and the solar flux aren't perfect, 
uh, still give a listen. Propagation changes. An, an example of that is when the K indice goes high, it means that there are probably Aurora Borealis uh, not far from my location being in Canada. Sometimes this disrupts propagation and you might have noticed that one day you're listening for example to the BBC or Radio Romania or one of your favorite station that comes in real strong. The next day you'll listen and the signal is really fluttery. You see that the, the signal is uh, has a variation, a quick variation and the audio is like a trembling audio and you're wondering what's happening. That is very often the effect of an, uh, a geomagnetic storm and it's often the case when we have aurora borealis they're all in you know kind of they interact with each other uh, aurora borealis are there usually when the geomagnetic storms are here and so you'll see that the signals flutter a lot and that means that the k indice if you look at the k indice it's probably much higher than one or two it may be five or four or six or seven so uh, this is something to look for but even if those signals are no good, it doesn't mean propagation is bad everywhere. And that's another interesting feature that I noticed is high K indice will often make signals almost impossible to hear sometimes. But it adds an effect where sometimes signals from one part of the world are stronger. So uh, in a geomagnetic storm, for example, I might find that I can't really hear Radio Romania, that usually comes well, but I might find that South American stations in the tropical bands are much stronger than they were before. Or those Brazilian stations on 9 and 11 megahertz, they come in so much stronger suddenly. It will enhance some parts, but it will destroy propagation on other parts. Um, it also has a big effect, an example of an effect that's very, very uh, often seen. Um, it happens quite often if you're in Europe or uh, North America and you hear a station from Asia. There is often, um, the signals often cross the North Pole, meaning that you might hear it direct, but the signal will be going through the poles up to our regions because it's easier to do and closer in, in general also like that than it is if you uh, would put more of a east-west type signal. Uh, in general north-south signals tend to propagate better than east-west signals on shortwave. So if the K indice goes higher, so for example you have a K of zero, you hear, um, let's put an example, China Radio International direct from Beijing and the signal crosses the pole to go to your location. With a K of zero works well, but if K indice for the geomagnetic activity goes to three or four, you might notice that, oh, no China Radio International on one day. Why? Because the geomagnetic activity prevents the propagation of these signals through the poles. So it's complex. Um, it's uh, almost a full course to understand all of that. But um, I believe that, you know, slowly check for these websites and you'll see which ones are uh, interesting. Uh, try to uh, match the signals that you hear, the, the quality, uh, the frequencies you listen to, to uh, the solar flux. Uh, you know, I'm excited when the solar flux goes to, uh, to 150 or 170 because I know that propagation on the higher frequencies is going to be much better. Uh, yet, I won't be excited if K and the C or A and the C's get higher. Uh, one interesting feature of spaceweather.com is the fact that they often tell you about CMEs or uh, solar flares that happened. Like here it says a slow CME incoming from a sunspot. CMEs are coronal, coronal, uh, coronal mass ejection and they are often they come from sunspots or areas where the magnetic field of the sun is no good. It's, uh, it's no good, sorry, it, it collapsed. Um, when they talk about that, 
you can expect, for example, it says here it can give a blow to the Earth's magnetic field on October 20th. So you can see that, okay, on October 20th, there's a possibility that the K and the C, the geomagnetic field of the Earth, is going to become unsettled because of that. In short wave, might not be as good as it is uh, normally. So these are all interactions uh, that you can check for. Uh, I'm interesting. It's interesting for one thing in my case is the fact that I love astronomy and also I love um, short wave. So all of this gets in together. So hopefully you enjoyed. Remember the websites uh, propagation dx.qsl.net slash propagation spaceweather.com and finally uh, solarham.net check that information and also check WWV at the 18th minute past each hour if you don't have the internet uh, or don't have access to the internet WWV on 5 on 2.5 5 10 15 and 20 megahertz 18 minute past the hour they give you the solar flux they give you the K and the C and the A and the C's so you can note those just jot them down on a piece of paper and know when things are going bad so uh, I know it's a little difficult to understand uh, I did go just to the surface of the information but I hope it helps you understand a little more why sometimes you hear something and sometimes you don't if you uh, enjoy our videos, well, I hope you subscribe to our channel and uh, hope that you enjoy this special video for uh, geomagnetic activity and solar storms and their interaction with uh, shortwave radio. Thanks for watching. 73.